Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, assign cookies. We're basically given two input arrays. One is the greed factor of every child. So every child has a certain greed factor. The higher the number, the more greedy they are, which means they require a larger cookie. And we also have a second array, which gives us the size of every cookie that we have. So consider the first example down here. We have three children. This is how greedy each of them are. And the rule is that each child can only be given a cookie that is greater than or equal, like the size has to be greater than or equal to the greed factor of that child. So we can give this child this cookie, but we don't have a cookie big enough for this child or big enough for this child because the only other cookie we have is of size one, this is two, and this is three. Our goal here is to satisfy as many children as we can. So basically each child has to be given a cookie or in other in other words, as many children have to be given cookies as possible. We don't need to give a child multiple cookies. That would be wasteful. We don't want to waste any cookies, but we want to try to give each of them a cookie. Now, we can't give these two children a cookie, so we can only give this one a cookie, in which case we end up returning one. That's the max number of children that can be given cookies. So the question is now, how do we solve it? How do we do this optimally? Well, you can imagine that there is a brute force approach. Perhaps we go through every child in this array. We check, okay, this is one. Then we have to try to find a one or something greater than a one in this array. Suppose this array actually had a two in this spot then maybe we go through this array and maybe we see the one first. Then we say, okay, we'll give this child a one. Then we go to this two and we find a two and we say, okay, we'll give this child a two. That technically works, even though this isn't efficient, the time complexity would be O of N times M where N and M are the size of these two arrays. But think about it this way. What if we actually saw this two first and we say, okay, two is good enough for this child. And then we'd only have a one left. One can't be assigned to either of these two remaining children. So depending on the order of these arrays, this approach actually might not even work. So obviously the order is relevant. We would want to give every child the smallest possible cookie that we would have to. So we can save the bigger cookies for the children that are more greedy. In other words, it becomes kind of obvious that sorting is going to be helpful to solve this problem. And what we could do is sort this array S to ensure that we find the smallest cookie that satisfies each child first. But that would not actually improve the time complexity. It would make this problem possible to solve. But if we end up sorting the first array as well, then we kind of know that the values towards the beginning of this array are going to be what's going to be matched with the values towards the beginning of this array. And actually, we can take it one step further. What we can say is we can eliminate the repeated work. For example, if we got to one here, we would iterate over this array, trying to look for a value big enough for this child. Then when we got to two, we'd do the same thing. We'd start at the beginning of this array, looking for a cookie big enough for this child. But if we maintain two pointers, one pointer, which of course is iterating over the children, and a second pointer, which is iterating over this array, and we save the spot of this second pointer, we can actually eliminate the repeated work. We can get the time complexity down to big O of n plus m. At least that's what it would take to iterate over these two. But we know we do have to sort this guy and we have to sort this guy. So the true time complexity is actually n log n plus m log n. And let me show you how we would do that, why it works. Just to make it more interesting, I'm going to add a two and a three here. So obviously these two arrays are already sorted. Suppose we start here, we get to one. Okay, then we want to start looking for a cookie. We start at the beginning, we see a one. Okay, one is enough for this kid. So one child is happy. Now that second pointer down here is now going to be incremented to the next spot because we already used this cookie. But this is convenient for us because why would we want to look at this one anyway if we've already used the cookie? And not only that, but imagine if we actually had a cookies of size, let's say a zero, even though I don't think that's possible in this uh, problem, but just imagine that we did, we had a couple zeros and then we had the one, two, 
three. What we would have done instead is we would have started here. We're looking for at least a cookie that's greater than or equal to one. Then we'd go here. We'd say, okay, zero. Nope. Not looking for that. Another zero. Nope. And then here we'd find the one. And not only is it enough for this kid, but we know this is the smallest possible cookie that we have that makes this kid happy. And then now we're going to the next value. So here we're not going to have to look at these ever again, because we know that the next child is going to be greater than or equal to this child anyway, at least like their greed factor. So we don't ever want to look at these cookies. We're starting here and that's actually good for us. Here, to make this kid happy, we need a cookie of two. We see we have a two here. Great. Shift the pointer here and shift this pointer here. Now we're looking for a cookie of size three. We have one. So we made three kids happy. The result would be three in this case. Suppose this cookie didn't actually exist. Maybe it was a two. Then we would take this pointer and end up shifting it out of bounds. And now we have no cookies left. So whether we have one child or 10 children remaining, it doesn't matter. We were only able to make this many happy. So we would return that. In other words, the way I'm going to code this up, we actually don't even need to keep track of how many kids we made happy because as you can see, we're doing this in a greedy way. We're trying to make the kids with the smaller greed factor happy first. So if our eye pointer ends here, that means we were able to make this kid happy. If the eye pointer ends over here, that means we were able to make these two kids happy. If we can shift the eye pointer all the way out of the array, that means we were able to make all of these kids happy. And the eye pointer here would be at index three, so we'd be able to return three. So now let's code this up. What I'm gonna do is first just sort the two input arrays, G sort and uh, S sort. And then I'm gonna have our two pointers. I is gonna be the pointer in array G, and J is gonna be the pointer in array S. They're both gonna initially start at the beginning, and we're gonna keep going while our I pointer is in bounds, so in bounds of G. And remember, what we're actually gonna return is I itself, because that will tell us how many kids we made happy. Now, we wanna know, is the cookie at index J greater than or equal to the greed of the child at index i. In other words, if this is not the case, so I'm gonna take the opposite of this, I'm going to say the greed factor is greater than the size of the cookie, that means we need to take our j pointer and shift it to the right. While this is true, we need to increment j because we're looking for greater cookies. We know this array is sorted, so if we keep incrementing this, we will find greater cookies. But it's possible that our pointer ends up going out of bounds. So before we even make this comparison, let's just check j is less than the length of s, and this is true, then we will keep looking for a bigger cookie. Now, even after this loop is finished, it could be possible that we went out of bounds. So let's check. If J is less than length of S, that means we found a cookie. So what do we do when we find a cookie? Well, all we need to do is increment I because we made uh, that child happy, so let's move to the next child. But also, we are using the cookie at index J, so we should probably increment index J as well. We can do that on one line if you want, but it's not like a big deal. Now, if this is not the case, meaning that J went out of bounds, we did not find a cookie big enough for the child at index I, then we can kind of just take a shortcut and break out of this loop. If you want to make this code a tiny bit more concise, you can, I guess, take this out of the loop and just say if this ends up equaling that, then we break out. Otherwise, we do the incrementions you see down there. But I mean, shortening this code really isn't that big of a deal, so I guess I wouldn't waste your time on it. Let's run this to make sure that it works. As you can see on the left, yes, it does. It's pretty efficient, even though the runtime doesn't indicate that. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.